Hey guys, you're watching one and only. My name is AJ. Welcome back to the episode of Let's Build a Medieval City. Today we're going to be working on the farms. I'm just putting in some water because you sort of need it. Um, oops, unfortunately, even though it does wreck the look of some farms. Things like wheat, we can actually sort of get around by placing hay bales on top of. Um, but other ones we're going to have to be a little bit more creative with. So I'm just trying to place down enough water spots here to hydrate all of the land. I might be wrong. We might be able to do it without water. Because we're not actually using the farms, we might be able to get away with it. But best to be safe than sorry. So we're going to start off with the wheat because that does need water. There might be a few jump cuts in this episode as well. Um, because unless you want to sit and watch me farm down hundreds and hundreds of wheat far uh, wheat plants then uh, uh <laughs> you're gonna be out of luck so that one that one oh my god it's so big okay it's not not as far as i thought left to go that one that one so i think as long as you're within nine blocks of another water source you should be okay it, it, is that correct it's been so long since i've done farms since i've done survival i don't really remember too much of it uh silly things like that you just tend to forget i wish i wouldn't do that I'd waste so much time uh -huh. Uh -huh. i know you c it, water doesn't hydrate uphill but i think it does hydrate downhill i think i'm right in saying that we'll, we'll do wheat all the way down to here why not and no harm in it uh do that one so many spot oops <laughs> spots of water uh that one that one so i'll just stay with you for the first bit here i'll probably go off camera once i start placing the wheat down um i don't think it's going to actually take that long though because once you've hoed it it's just matter of sort of holding down your mouse button and it'll just do it that looks pretty good to me that looks pretty good to me uh so the only way that we're really going to be able to tell is by hoeing it out but are we gonna have a problem if i put a fence around that animals are going to spawn in there or can animals spawn on like wheat blocks or or hoed hold, hold land or can they only spawn on grass and stuff because i don't want animals spawning in here and just constantly crushing the farm it just would be terrible and there's no way that i can there's no like difficulty setting uh that the game has where is it it's difficult uh, yeah there's no difficulty setting that stops passive mobs from spawning that i know of so yeah anyway we're gonna go with fences uh for all of the edges of the farms so i'm going to go and put these around i'm going to place down the wheat and i'll come back to you and show you guys what it looks like okay i always forget how long that truly takes to do <laughs> if you've never built a giant farm in minecraft and and had to hoe out all of the ground you'll not appreciate how much time it takes and how much work it takes it takes forever boy does it just look cool being brown though doesn't it it just looks cool like an empty field it takes so long it's like literally a, a half an hour job to do that it's nuts um but yeah that's the wheat field done while we're here we might as well do all the other ones that require water i've made the fences high in some spots like here so things can't get in um like like not even i could get out of here um i might be able to there i might be able to run and jump but animals can't sprint jump so we don't need to worry about too much i'll put it there anyway uh but yeah they can only jump while sort of walking so as long as they can't get in there we should be okay and i think chickens are safe anyway aren't they because chickens they flutter down to the floor Flutter, flutter, flutter. and they touch the ground so lightly that it doesn't like uh break the crops or anything like that so hopefully we should be okay 
all the other ones are a lot smaller. Still a lot to do, but at least they're smaller. You see that water jumped out of the hole that I put it in and then go back into it? That was really weird. So the hardest ones to do are definitely the ones on like these little gradients here. Um, oops, that's not right. These are really, really difficult to um, hydrate. You sort of have to put them in really strategic positions uh, in order to do it. Oops, that didn't work that time. There, there, there. I can hear running water. Oh, there might be a, a, one of those little ponds underneath the ground there. Ah! No! <laughs> of course it would. Um, still need some more down here. It's like the longest episode ever to record. I've, I, I've never wanted to... I've always wanted to record this episode, like, right from when I began planning. Uh the idea for this series i've always wanted to have these giant farms but i knew that these are such a pain to actually do um that i, I i've been putting this off for ages <laughs> it's gonna look good once it's done it'll look amazing it's just getting to that point of uh of battling through it um, I need to make sure that I've got that part hydrated. These little tufts of grass also get in the way. Uh, that obviously I didn't fill in and I should have. Look at the greenness of the grass in my hand compared to the grass when it goes on the ground. It's really weird, isn't it? Uh, like that. Have to take out these trees as well. I don't know how much we're going to get done today. Today might be a shorter episode for you guys because uh, for me it's going to be really, really long. Uh, so I might like get a bit of fatigue and, and, and sort of give up for the day and then come back to it another day. Um, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe the episode will be a bit shorter for you. I'll try my best to get to a normal length episode. But this stuff takes so ridiculously long to do that uh, I might not be able to do it all in one hit. Okay, so that's going to be the next one. Uh, oh, no, I didn't need to do it in there, really. Pumpkins aren't too... Or, or pumpkins are done differently, aren't they? Pumpkins and melons. Uh, oh, poop. Okay, a little bit of time wasted, but it doesn't matter. Uh, right, I'm going to continue on with this. I'm going to get all of the fields that need to be hoed, hoed, and then I'll be back. All right. <laughs> That's so painful. My hand hurts. That's how painful it is. Oh, we need a piece of water in there. There we go. Okay, this is what it looks like on the map. It's getting there, right? That's starting to look like a farm on the map. I've had an idea about the pumpkins and the melons as well. Because they're always awkward to grow, aren't they? No matter, you know, if you're, if you're in survival or anything. They're always awkward. So, what we're going to do is instead I'm going to do lines of pumpkins and melons. And then just put either fences or actual melon stalks connecting to them and then we can get them neater as well we can get them in lines and stuff i think i think lines would be nice i think we'll have the melons going this way now with melons we don't need to worry about the um faces because they don't have one so i'm thinking like this we follow the contour of the ground I might do some missing ones afterwards, so I might actually like carve out some spots where there aren't melons afterwards, but for the moment we'll just do them as solid lines. Like so. Ooh, floating melon. And with the pumpkins it shouldn't be that difficult either, because we'll just do what the one on the end curved towards us. And that will work. I might put some water, um, what would you call them? Water spots, should we call them? Water, water squares in as well, just to make it look a little bit more farm like. I think we'll fill those in with grass because what's the point of them not being there? Like this. Oh, yeah, look on the map. Yes, 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 yes. And I think the missing ones will just add a little bit of imperfection to it, which is a good thing in this case. You don't want absolutely perfect farms, which is why I, I didn't 
like mathematically go through exactly the minimum amount of water spots needed to hydrate that amount of land you could do that and it's efficient to do that like if you were trying to make an efficient minecraft world definitely spacing out the waters perfectly uh, is your best way to utilize the space hello phone my phone going crazy today uh but um for us we want a sort of more natural a more organic look so random water spots is definitely better for us oh and i did carve out a little path with fences leading to the windmill because i forgot about that <laughs> so i'll show you that as well and uh, not that it's that important that one and that one, yeah see we've got a little path that leads up to that and it divides the uh, carrot patches into two all right see that looks cool just how it is but i think just having some missing ones uh not there that one 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 it's almost like a fun mini game to try and get through it like a little mini maze isn't it see that's just help i, I think that looks a lot better like that and then if we get fences we've already got fences sort of going around it um hang on pumpkin if i got uh, not pumpkin melon i always get the two confused do they join up instantly to us like if i put a water bit in there and i hydrate that and i do that and i bone meal it yeah maybe just connecting up a few would be good like do that one do that one do oops do that one do that one this one here seems like a good one oh, we got sort of let's get that one what, what what order am i going to do it in i've got to put the water down hoe it and then put that down and then bone meal it and that way i don't need to flick between all the time water hoe seed bone meal water hoe seed bone meal is it really making that much of a difference you know that might be enough that that might be enough for me i think that looks good same with the pumpkins now with the pumpkins i think we'll do them in the opposite direction just so they look a little bit different uh, so we'll go here and what we'll do is we'll put the pumpkins facing this way and then the last one of each row will just face the other way and that way it hides all of the faces up so we get like normal normal looking pumpkins so we'll do that like that that one interesting fact that maybe some of you guys know and maybe some of you guys don't no matter what way a pumpkin grows its stalk will always face that way what way is that northwest apparently their stalks no matter what way i rotate the pumpkins the top always faces that way i don't know why i don't know why that is like that it seems to be like one of the only blocks in the game that sort of do that um because the faces can the faces will point four directions depending on what way you place the pumpkin but the tops don't things like grass and cobblestone you know their pattern is always the same no matter what but their pattern's the same on either side you can't rotate the blocks but then things like hay blocks all of the faces turn depending on which direction you're placing it pistons are the same it's strange that pumpkins just have that one face that only face one way it's odd um that's awkward because i can't place the pumpkin in anywhere i'll do that 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 and then hoe that one <laughs> that's what we'll do all right cool so pumpkins like that let's divide put some holes in some of them that i could just it really does look better ah but now we need to rotate these pumpkins on the edges don't we like that one 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 ah uh, I, I can't do it all there cool perfect all right now it's starting to look like a farm now it's the painful job again we need to get uh carrots and potatoes 
the shame with the, the with the, these farms is that we're not actually going to see the full effect of it uh, and for a couple of episodes at least because they need to grow and mature up especially the wheat the wheat's going to look really weird until it's fully grown and we get that beautiful yellow uh waves of of, of it put that there because that didn't grow uh carrots so not only do you have to go through the painful job of hoeing each piece of grass or dirt uh, into this type of, of hoed land, uh, or whatever you call it, hydrated land. You then need to go around it all again to plant the stuff. It's crazy. This is a lot quicker though. Planting's a lot quicker than hoeing. You don't need to be as precise. The game sort of automatically locks on to it. So it's not as, as painful. These ones have already started to grow that we we placed down last episode end of last episode in fact most of those are fully matured the pump uh, the, the potatoes would have been too until i placed the water wrong and washed them all away also bonus with this is that the far these farms the carrots and the potatoes aren't that big the wheat one is the painfully large one i just can't wait to see what it looks like on the map with them all grown oh yeah because you can see a little bit of green on the map with these placing down there's a little bit of a green hint and I think it'll get more green. Yeah, it does. It gets more green. You can see just to the left of my red arrow on the map. That's a slightly more um, uh, brighter green as the is grown thicker. So we should get a really cool look on it eventually at some point. And it's definitely better to have different levels instead of it all being flat, uh, flat land. Having these slight little increases and decreases really makes it look more more realistic in a way. More natural. Ugh. Right, so it's carrots and wheat. And then this side of the farm is done. Everything on that side is like manual place. Like we don't need to grow anything. I don't need to worry about water spots or nothing like that. It's all our own place stuff. So we should be good. All right, I'm going to cut away for the last time place down all of these carrots place down all of the wheat i'm not going to bone meal them though i could go around and bone meal everything so it's all instantly grown but uh it's just going to take too long so i should be back i just thought of something i'm not done <laughs> still got a lot to go uh, but i've had a lot of time to think first thing is please if there was a way that i could have done this with world edit to like just speed it up like i don't know select an area slash slash farm wheat and it just goes and places wheat down everywhere. Please don't tell me. If there was a way to... Uh, get out of here. Sword. Go away. Uh, if there was a way to do that. And there's a way to like auto farm uh, the ground. And auto hoe it and stuff using world. Well, please don't tell me. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know that I've wasted like three or four hours of my life doing this. Um, and secondly, to do with that chicken in fact. Is... You know that there's game rules that we can use commands with, like, uh, fire spread off and uh, weather and stuff like that. Weather, not so much, but, you know, game game rule. Uh, oh, stupid thing. How am I going to stop that from happening? Uh, placing that there, that one, and then that one, and then hoe that. Uh, so, yeah, sorry, what was I saying? I've gone off track. Um, yeah, game rules. Wouldn't it be cool if there was game rule trample off so if you toggled that off your crops wouldn't get trampled because the amount of times i've just floated down like this and just broke it um and then had to oops redo it and replace and reho and plant again and stuff it's been crazy if there was just a game rule toggle trample off that would be really really useful i think for a lot of people a lot of builders and stuff would, would really like that because i'm petrified of just getting a pig or something on the land and and just wrecking it because we can do all sorts we can turn mobs off we can turn the weather to whatever we want we can turn the daytime to whatever we want we can make the daytime and nighttime speed up i mean there's pretty much everything that we can do apart from toggling see apart from toggling trample on and off it would just be handy to have it'd be really useful to have i don't know maybe it's just me anyway i'm going to carry on i should be back all right nearly done how cool is that looking hey nearly done i thought of another game rule Ooh, while i was in my hours and hours of doing this while thinking 
uh, and that's ground hydrate true or false so we'd have trample true or trample false if you wanted things to trample when you stepped on them and then ground hydrate or just hydrate or something like that true or false would mean if it was true you needed like these little squares of water in order to hydrate the ground and make crops grow and if you toggled it false uh, then you could just hoe the ground and it would automatically be hydrated that would be cool as well because although some of me does like having these little blue spots of water they look like puddles in the field is what i sort of always imagine them to look be like little, little puddles in the troughs and stuff um and, and they do sort of look cool having these little blue dots but sometimes they don't look cool in some types of farms so being able to have them just gone would be amazing it'd be really really cool to have all right so here's this side of the farm it's looking really cool this side will look amazing as well that's going to be wheat by the way there i'm going to do a little bit of wheat on that side uh but yeah i really really like that i can't wait to see what it looks like when this is all yellow that's going to be re a really cool sort of sweeping up uh the hill there and really makes the the windmill look amazing doesn't it hey really cool i think the shaders will even make these wobble a little bit maybe when they're older yeah they do they have a, they have a wobble on them even the tiny ones do that's really cool right really really cool the water looks a little bit weird when you do do that but yeah oh i think it looks so cool did these ones wobble the little tiny ones oh nearly went Did they wobble? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like uh, carrots wobble. What about the painters? No, the painters don't wobble either. But they are growing. All right, awesome. I'm I'm really really chuffed. I think this looks really really cool. There is one thing I won't do it today, all today, but I think with the hay, we will hide up the water mounds. By just placing hay blocks over the top of them. Now we should be able to. Yeah, cool. So I can click straight onto those and it won't just trample the seeds. And then this way it looks like they've sort of been baled. I don't know how many water spots there are. Oh, it's not actually going to take long. We might do this together just to finish off the episode. With. with such a risky move to try and pull that one that one no. so please in the comment section oh no in the comment section let me know if you've ever done this before i want i want to know how many of you are as crazy as me maybe you've done bigger ones if you've done bigger ones then that's that's crazy and well done for uh putting in that effort i know uh, who was it was it b dubs i think b dubs in his world um no it's i think it's etho i think both of them have done it actually i think probably most youtubers have done it in the time. i know etho in his survival world has huge wheat farms and uh, they're not automated or nothing you know un unlike him not to to automatically make redstone into everything uh but uh some of the stuff that he did some of the uh, wheat farms that he's got a crazy crazy big like one wheat farm is like bigger than this area and uh i can only imagine how long that took him because he done it on survival as well so he couldn't even fly like i am which means he would have had to have gone up and down the hills and probably trampled them or being really careful and shifted off each one gently oh man i can't even imagine even with these hay bales and the plants not grown i think it looks pretty cool those ones down there that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. They sort of get easier as the plants get bigger because the hitbox gets larger. It's quite, quite interesting. That one, that one. Oops. Oh, the hitboxes don't get bigger. Huh. No matter what size, how, no matter what maturity the wheat is. I wonder what the hitbox on full wheat is. The same. Huh cool learn something new there that one that one oh there's more than i thought i thought oh, this isn't going to take long this is like a a two minute 
finish up the episode job. We're nearly there, though. Yeah, let me know. Let me know. Um, what's the biggest farm that you've ever done in Minecraft? Bigger than mine? Probably bigger than mine. Mine feels big, but I'm sure you guys have done way, way bigger. Uh... Okay, I think this is like the final two or something. It's got to be. There can't be many more. I can see one over there. I can't see any more on the mini-map. Right, cool. That just hides up all of the water on the wheat field then. If you guys enjoyed the episode, which I hope you did, because this took absolutely forever to do, then hit that like button. We're not going to see the full effects of this until probably a couple of episodes' time. Um, but it's going to be really cool when we do see it and we get all of the, the wheat grown and it all waving in the wind. If you haven't already, then feel free to subscribe. We shall see you in the next episode.